Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last annual session of the conference. I'm Howard Lee from uh, University of California, Irvine. I will be the chair of this uh, panel sessions. We have a uh, two really exciting talk in uh, this panel sessions uh, from Dr. Dushan Sons uh, from Samsung's and also uh, Professor Harry Edward uh, Caltech in the US, uh, both focusing actually on metal photonics, metal surface, but applying to different device applications and also uh, different uh, property as well. So without further delays, then it's my pleasure to introduce the first uh, panel speaker of today's, uh, is Du Hong Song from Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology. And the uh, topic is talking about the metal photonics applied to device technology at the same time with some applications. So looking forward to your talk, Dr. Song. Thank you, Howard. Uh, I'm Joe Song from SITE, Samsung of the Best Institute of Technology. First of all, I'd like to express my uh, sincere uh, gratitude to the organizers uh, for giving me the uh, opportunity to present the uh, final talk. The title of my talk is uh, Device Technology and the Vision for a Better Life Empowered by Meta Photonics. The outline of the, uh, my talk is as follows. Uh, it's my honor to introduce myself. Uh, now I'm leading the uh, device resource at the site so that uh, the synergy between electronics and uh, photons can be made. Uh, in the beginning, uh, there was light and light has been all the good. Uh, there are four main ages uh, that divide up the history of information technology. The first one is a pre-mechanical uh, pre age, the era and uh, mechanical age and electromechanical age. Finally, we are now living in the electronic age. Uh, in the pre-mechanical uh, pre age, information was uh, exchanged uh, in the form of drawing or writing uh, by hand on social uh, papers. Recently, an Indonesian an Australian joint research team uh, published in Nature. They discovered the uh, uh, figurative uh, artworks of the uh, wild animals about uh, 20, uh, 52,000 years ago. The Lubang, Jeriti Saleh cave paintings are uh, much older than the previous Shobe cave paintings uh, in France, which is uh, they from about uh, 50, uh, 30, uh, 35 years ago. After that, information was uh, delivered and stored uh, in a pen uh, on a papyrus or paper. Uh, mankind has not borrowed the power of machines uh, as yet. The machine age began around 1450, uh, as you know well. This is thanks to metal printing uh, by Johannes Gutenberg. However, in fact, in uh, Korea, about 70 ahead of Gutenberg, uh, the world uh, first movable metal types were made in 1377. Uh, this was officially recorded by UNESCO. If you print uh, out using a metal type, uh, as you can see here, the much larger amount of information uh, can be expressed with high density in detail. And and can be reproduced easily uh, by borrowing the uh, power of machines like this. Mankind has been living in the age of the uh, exponentially increased information through uh, print books. Mankind entered a new era in terms of uh, information transmission as well as the uh, information strategy. In 1837, some invented the electric telegraph uh, and also in 1876 uh, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Electric signals were transmitted uh, directly through a speaker. It has opened up to the delivery of voice information. In the middle of the uh, 20th century uh, information technology made a leap forward uh, the ENIAC 
is the uh, calculator that was created for general purpose calculation. Uh, the ENIAC is uh, in the IRE proceeding. The uh, ENIAC is explained uh, as the, the first general purpose computing machine in which the computation is done uh, electronically, entirely electronically. The emphasis is on uh, first and electronically. In other words, the computation is done only in the entire uh, electronic domain. Uh, later, with the invention of the uh, transistor and MOS and CMOS and IC and so on, the computer has been developed uh, toward the uh, initialization and integration in the, in the entirely uh, electronic domain. Uh, there have been so many uh, developments since the advent of the uh, electronic era. Uh, this figure uh, shows the memory of the uh, 1956. Uh, it's a scene where five megabyte hard disk, hard disk drive is uh, loaded onto an airplane, uh, which is a, a huge device weighing more than 900 kilograms. Uh, this is uh, has to be this has to be lifted with a crane. But today, it comes in uh, about 50 gram uh, portable solid state drive uh, with a uh, capacity of two terabyte. The capacity over, uh, over a period of 65 years, the capacity increased uh, about 1 million times. And then why the volume became uh, 10 to the minus time um, smaller. Yeah, it is uh, really tremendous uh, miniaturization and uh, integration. This uh, miniaturization and integration uh, has a leap forward uh, in uh, calculations. The ENIAC uh, could finish uh, calculating the path of the projectile uh, with a flight time of 60 seconds in 30 seconds. It was very uh, uh, particularly important, important at that time uh, because it means that it can compute, uh, sorry, the pass of the, uh, uh, the trajectory of the shell faster than shell itself flight. Uh, the clock frequency of the ENIA is about 100 kilohertz. On the other end, in case of uh, Samsung Exynos 2200, which uh, goes into the latest mobile uh, uh, Galaxy S22, uh, shows the performance of uh, 1.7 uh, gigahertz based on four core. Uh, as you see here, it became it's a, uh, incomparably smaller in size, and uh, there has been a huge improvement in performance as well. In the history of information technology, uh, mankind has uh, made a lot of uh, progress. Uh, in the history of this information technology development, uh, we will uh, we'll continue to use uh, electronics and photonics together. It will uh, bring us uh, more convenient and better future. Uh, the word beta originates from the, uh, the Greek word, uh, which means the, uh, the beyond. The pioneer, pioneering works from Sopendry and Professor Smith uh, show that we can obtain the artificial material with the negative reflex index around the two decades ago. Likewise, beta material is an uh, artificial material uh, with properties that cannot be obtained in nature. Uh, then in, uh, back, back in uh, 2011, uh, Professor Kapasso's group uh, showed that one can manipulate the flow, uh, flow of life at the deep sub wavelength scale within Ultra, uh, ultra surfaces uh, called meta surfaces, uh, which have also been inspired by uh, Professor Heidemann uh, and the Professor Anand earlier. Then uh, we can try uh, to make a clear distinction on beta photonics and its ancestors. Uh, personal lens or diffractive. Uh, optical elements show a thickness variation 
or uh, depending on the location. And uh, subray uh, gate, uh, gratings and the photonic crystals do have a sub wavelength scale like this. However, their functions are based on uh, collective behavior of multiple or larger size uh, array of elements. Uh, therefore, in terms of size of independent tree, functioning unit, uh, those are uh, different from beta services. Uh, unlike the, those ancestors, beta uh, photonics shows a uh, high potential in terms of best production and uh, extreme uh, resolution. Uh, first, beta uh, photonics show the uh, extreme uh, can use the uh, well established uh, single step uh, semiconductor manufacturing uh, technologies. It is because the beta uh, the structures of the Beta photonics show uh, extremely thin and uniform thickness. Uh, second, they pr uh, provide the first line a platform to uh, control the uh, optical responses uh, at uh, the subwavelength scale. As the time evolves, we have continued to the size of the uh, pixel or unit set that can convey. Uh, different information and function independently. Now, uh, this is uh, due to the uh, beta photonics. We can we are able to control the uh, optical responses by uh, just uh, a single or few units. Inspired by these potentials, SI uh, has uh, been actively working uh, towards the innovative applications. For example. We have uh, demonstrated extreme uh, high resolution in uh, organic light emitting diode with uh, uh, 10,000 pixels per inch. And we also show the uh, holographic display with a beam deflector uh, in a sleep panel. And by using the standard uh, time dependent modulation in the beta surface, uh, we produced non mechanical uh, steering uh, beams uh, for the LiDAR. And uh, in cooperation with uh, Professor uh, Nose Group, Fulham uh, Poste, we showed that ultra thin beta lens in the NIR, which can be, uh, which can be best produced by uh, using nano composite printing vessel. Uh, if we take a look at the development process of the electronics and beta photonics. There are similarities. Uh, uh, recently, Samsung announced the uh, 3 nanometer uh, node, uh, node generation, uh, the world's first uh, uh, gate, trans uh, gate all around transistor, as known as uh, MBC bed. MBC bed here it shows the uh, ability to improve the performance by uh, adding the additional, add, uh, by adding, stacking the additional channel layers. Uh, that is the changing the direction of the uh, uh, channel, uh, changing the, the channel uh, structures in uh, out of the plane, that is the, in the vertical plane, vertical uh, direction. We can, uh, we are pushing the technology um, beyond the scale limit. The most representative example of the, uh, this arrow plane or vertical direction is the vertical method memory. Uh, early 2010, uh, the vertical land memory uh, began to replace the uh, traditional planar land. Each generation has been developed a bit of the state of the sorry percent of four. Now, uh, the number of layers stacking is uh, uh, increasing, uh, stacked, uh, increasing to more than 117. We expect that uh, the cost effective manufacturing of VNAN uh, with over 10,000 stacks can be uh, uh, achieved. By opening the degree of freedom uh, uh, in uh, to a vertical direction. So like this, uh, we can do more. 
uh, as in the electronics, also uh, in beta photonics. Uh, the unlike the the uh, photocrystal crystal or uh, different grating uh, uh, different gratings, uh, the structures of the uh, beta photonics uh, show the uh, uh, the shows the excellent uh, excellent light combinement. It is uh, these characteristics were uh, made uh, possible by the uh, materials uh, with high reflective index and low absorption coefficient. Uh, the represented material uh, they include the silicon and aluminum uh, nitride and titanium dioxide and so on. In addition. To uh, you know, to really modulate amplitude and phase and uh, polarization, the phase control for two pi is required. Uh, for this purpose, techniques uh, for fabricating structure with the high aspect ratio is also applied. Yeah. Uh, in beta photonics. Uh, people also started to turn on the degree of freedom in the vertical direction. In conventional beta photonics, uh, the characteristics were implemented uh, by changing only in frame, uh, in frame parameters with a single stereolithography on a single layer with a minimum thickness. Uh, for, however, for broad operation, broadband operation and multifunctional beta surfaces, uh, innovate approaches other than conventions or, uh, conventions or conventional conventional ones are being explored. For example, uh, for achromatic bands uh, with a high numerical aperture, topology optimization in a three-layer three uh, structure is uh, used. And for color routing, uh, according to uh, its wavelengths, uh, inverse giant volumetric structure was proposed. Also, for multiplexing or for 100 angular momentum, um, angular, uh, angular open momentum, so the complex modulation with the sequence variation was also uh, proposed. <laughs> now, uh, I will introduce new potential of the meta photonics and our. Uh, research is not from site. The scaling of the uh, miniaturization is uh, taking place also in uh, the CMOS image sensor for mobile phones. As you can see here, now the, the, the pixel size is getting smaller, and then now it's uh, uh, the smaller than the scale of the visible light band, and then will continue to below that. So we need to explore innovative ways. Uh, as the electronic uh, technologies uh, progress towards the extreme uh, miniaturization, with miniaturization, uh, various problems arise. There is a plural capacity as it uh, becomes uh, smaller, the, as the single pixel, uh, so, as the pixel size becomes smaller, the incoming light decreases. So, in order to solve the problem, because the the signal to move, uh, the sensitive the light in the light the amount of light incoming the pixel is a decreases, and then the uh, as the noise factors including the down noise remain the same, the sensitivity decreases, and then image quality deteriorates to solve the uh, problem. Uh, many innovative technologies were applied for a long time. However, there is a limit to electronics technology alone. So new attempts using beta photonics color routing are emerging. As such, so, uh, in a limit of the uh, uh, limit uh, in the in the limit of the uh, miniaturization. Uh, the synergy between electronics and uh, metaphotonics 
will be a major topic in the future. And then this is the about the power consumption. Deep learning has made remarkable advances uh, based on a simple uh, information processing model of neurons and uh, synapses. Uh, however, uh, exponential arithmetic uh, operations are required to improve performance. Uh, for example, natural language model such as CPT3 has uh, 175 billion parameters with this uh, increase in the, the amount of computation, power consumption also uh, increases sharply. However, the system peak energy efficiency uh, of the, the latest team learning uh, hardware uh, show the, the around the one times four watt is a stagnant and then power consumption improvement has been developed little by little uh, through technology, low the scale, but still uh, there's a still stagnant. So uh, the, do, uh, we did a breakthrough to uh, perform large scale team learning with low power. Conventional computer architecture is a uh, uh, Built on the base, uh, built on uh, von Neumann architecture, where memory unit and uh, computation is uh, totally separated. So, therefore, before uh, performing calculations, the all the data must be uh, fetched from the memory units to computation units. This increases a significant uh, power consumption. On the other hand, uh, in memory computing, uh, here. Uh, in-memory computing can reduce substantial amount of the uh, power consumption by uh, reducing the boot data movement. So in uh, site implemented uh, the world's first in-memory computing processor using training a nanometer processor. If we use the, uh, the in-memory computing, where yeah, this is, gives a great chance to achieve extremely low power. Also, uh, efforts to uh, improve the energy efficiency are also being attempted by uh, the replacing uh, back operation with the photonic method. A recent uh, research uh, has reached the level of the, uh, the most popular GPU, is uh, NVIDIA, uh, that uh, the research uh, uh, has reached the value of the uh, almost the same uh, peak efficiency using matrix 64 by 60 matrix. If the matrix size is increased, then uh, four times here, uh, 16 times, then uh, the, we can maybe we can achieve the uh, 10 times for about 10 times for what can be expected. However, I would like to put some claim uh, in order to achieve that kind of the, the high peak efficiency, we need to resolve the, uh, the uh, accuracy problem uh, and the computing and the footprint issue of the uh, photonics. Uh, beta photonics is uh, very similar to the uh, development process of electronics, uh, making, but sometimes making too much in all information technology, such as uh, sensor, interconnect, processor, Surgery and the display. I think the beta photonics will uh, bring us the, some in, uh, innovations in the future. Uh, the site uh, has been uh, exploring new uh, technologies that will be deployed in all of these uh, applications. Uh, in this meta campus, site uh, introduced latest visual, uh, such as spectrum. Sorry. Uh, sorry. A spectrometer, land, prism, LIDAR, and micro display. The first application we apply the meta photonics to is uh, LIDAR, uh, that is light detection and ranging. Uh, as the uh, era of the autonomous driving is come to come, uh, is, is about to come, we uh, made, a, we made a, a special light modulator or SLM, uh, working on, uh, on a meta surface. Uh, 
PhD place of of a steam uh, beam steering uh, photolyzer, we could uh, change the optical properties by changing uh, uh, by uh, of the each channel of the SLM by current, and we could uh, uh, obtain the substantial intensity towards the AMD angle with a high efficiency. And the the uh, the next uh, interesting application is the uh, CMOS image sensor. Uh, as the picture side uh, shrink, uh, has been uh, the image sensor has been shrink down the pixel size uh, for higher image resolution. However, if you increase the pixel size, the incoming light uh, has decreased as you showed before. And then in conventional uh, CMOS uh, image sensor, the two thirds of light is uh, lost. Uh, in the color field. So to solve these problems, we designed data surfaces uh, that showed the uh, wavelengths, showed light according to its wavelengths, and then we direct them into the corresponding uh, the pixels. So we could uh, uh, successfully implemented uh, pixel level meta lens uh, on a CMOS image sensor and we exper experimentally demonstrated the uh, in enhancement uh, demo uh, demonstrated that um, we could uh, experimentally demonstrate the enhancement in quantum efficiency. Uh, Dr. No will give a more dedicated talk for this topic uh, this morning at Alaksur today. The significant problem in achromatic lenses is uh, their low optical uh, efficiencies. Uh, this is a serious big point when we compare them with the conventional optics such as uh, plastic or glass lenses. So for the practical uh, use of the meta lens, we proposed a hybrid uh, meta lens. Instead of seeking a um, uh, solution for achromatic lens, we uh, introduced a pair of the uh, lenses with a glass lens, a conventional glass lens, and a meta lens. As you can see here, the meta lens uh, has a negative dispersion in focal shift so that it can compensate the positive shift of the glass lens so that we can have the flat uh, focal shift here. So we could obtain the uh, uh, full color imaging with a uh, hybrid lens. And site has also implemented uh, better surfaces for high spectral imaging uh, imaging. Uh, this high spectral image sensor uh, with this uh, high spectral image sensor, we can uh, obtain the more detailed information than the conventional RGB sensor in the visible light band. And this uh, high spectral image sensor enables uh, true color imaging with intensity color uh, accuracy. Also, in addition, uh, the uh, the uh, biometric uh, information can be also acquired. Uh, and then uh, also it, it can provide the means of authentication and recognition. Also, it can provide some means of the uh, optimized beauty care uh, solution uh, connecting to, by connecting to a uh, facial skin analysis. Also, we can uh, uh, carry out the uh, analysis with of the uh, freshness and batteries uh, by uh, the synthesizing spectrum and image information, UV, from UV to MIR. So, uh, this is about ultra high density micro LED displays for AR glasses uh, by uh, ion uh, implantation, uh, pixelated 
uh, Plana population was realized up to be more than uh, 5,000 PPI. And we implemented photolytic integration with the pixelated LEDs. And finally, uh, we uh, I used introducing the exercise export technology. We, uh, I'm sorry, we, we uh, realized the uh, high resolution quantum dot uh, color filter patterns. So that brings me to the end of the, uh, uh, the presentation. Uh, we have reviewed on how information technology has evolved. Uh, it follows a long trace uh, toward the uh, larger capacity uh, through large scale integration foreseen in plane and out of plane dimensions, as well as the uh, higher speed less power and uh, ultra uh, small size compactors uh, in this context. Uh, Meta photonics also features uh, photonics also features a uh, high large scale integration of the uh, optical uh, information. I think the uh, we believe that Meta photonics could play a role of key in technology in the information technology. So with the our well established established manufacturing processes, uh, we hope to contribute uh, to the Better life of the uh, better life through various killer applications. I would like to conclude my talk uh, quoting the famous saying of Alan Turing. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you, Dr. Son, for a really exciting talk. Uh, outlining different perspective application using method photonics. So we have time for a, a couple of questions. Uh, question over there, do we have the microphone? So a so microphone is coming, sir. So. I, I can hear, no problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, one of the examples is not example to the image factor. That's the image factor. This one or? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, example is the yeah. Uh, so you know that is how it's uh, uh, that is not a uh, emoji. Uh, oh, no, no, that this one? Or high spectrum emission sensor? Well, that's one of yeah. This one? Yeah. The cell, the, the pixel is already in the microwave. Right. And, yeah. uh, if we make this sensor, uh, you'll see it's a yeah. And how many how many period you use for this process? And this the pixel itself is already very small. Yeah, it's uh, about the the pitch is of RGB is yeah. about one point five six or, or around that size, and then the period is a uh, it is a whole kind of the meta surfaces. So uh, so maybe it's uh, two times over the, the, the pitch. But the, the light we have to understand working individually. Yeah, right, but right, yeah, the, um, uh, you yeah. can, you can see the from this side of pixel, uh, we can obtain the, uh, the uh, surrounding uh, rise from the only, in the, in, 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 uh, in this uh, conventional image, image sensor, the yeah. color filter was used, so only around the, this uh, area of the light is coming into the, is the pixel, yeah. but in case of the uh, image sensor, we can use the uh, the right. the, uh, the around the uh, whole range of the uh, right. We can use that, and then after collecting the right, after that we use the uh, the the final light coming into the uh, first one, the uh, pixel. Yeah. If you look at this uh, conventional one, it also has a micro lens array. Uh, right. We don't so use the micro lens. To focusing and the color routing. So we do not use the uh, better end here. I know, it's a, but the light will yeah. focus also, right? 
the micro, the conventional one has a micro lens on the top. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a meta surface, it has a role of the uh, micro lens. Okay. Yeah, that, that is the structure of the micro lens, right? It's, it's a organic material, it's a this is a, a, a semiconductor process of the meta structure. Other okay. uh, question from the audience? Any other questions? I have one question related to the light uh, technology yeah. you uh, mentioned. So I think the efficiency now is still quite low. So in the industry point of view, is that still practical for let's say application or is there any perspective on increasing the efficiency? Yeah, and so on. I think that uh, you know to improve the uh, the efficiency, we choose the uh, we can choose some the structure and then material. So before the previous lidar was we used ITO, but in in the, in the case it's the efficiency was better. We change the uh, structure using only silicon and silicon dioxide so we can uh, the manufacturing was quite simple also the efficiency was more than 30 percent so i think in that uh, uh, with the uh, efficiency we can uh, normalize the, the lighter yeah. questions from the audience over there yep Again, uh, uh, you can say your perspective on which material you use for metal structure. Uh, titanium dioxide is physical. Yeah. From the technology perspective, which is the choice? Uh, in uh, in industry, so we are using uh, the uh, seamless compatible processes. So in this case, uh, we use uh, titanium dioxide. Yeah, it is compatibility our uh, the uh, conventional semiconductor processes. So we prefer to use silicon, silicon dioxide, titanium dioxide, but we do not want the carbon dioxide. But well, if, if we use, if we have to use the, the carbon dioxide, and then you can use that in the LED uh, process, but usually in, in the similar process, we do not want to use the carbon dioxide. Yes. Is that your question? Yeah. Any other question from the audience? Okay, we have one more quick question. Yeah. So you mentioned about the multi-layer metal surface, like uh, or even volume uh, uh, metal materials. Like in an industrial point of view, is that practical to stacking multi-layer or like um, how about the integrations uh, uh, point of view? Uh, you mean, you mean multi-layer? Multi-layer, yes. Yeah. The, we can, I think, we can integrate the, any layers of the. Uh, we uh, integrate more than 170 stand layers in the vertical man, and also, I think we can easily uh, integrate the. I think that the integration of the multi layers is not a problem if the uh, the burden is enough. That the only thing is that the vertical it should be uh, compatible, and then if the uh, end of the market and the uh, the customer exists, uh, we can do. Yeah, for the purpose. Okay, sounds great. Okay, I think we need to move on. Let's thank you, Dr. Son, again for the really interesting talk. <laughs>